Every weekday over the national airwaves of ESPN Radio and ESPN News, 250 plus markets across the United States of America. Check your AM FM listing nearest you, plus ESPN Radio on Sirius XM Channel Lady, plus ESPN Radio Simulcast over the live national television airwaves of ESPN News. Number to call up as always is 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. Tune in to football action this Sunday as the Chicago Bears host the Los Angeles Chargers. Presented by Vivid Seats, pregame begins at noon Eastern on most ESPN radio stations. Time for Straight Talk brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Got a lot of stuff to get into today. I know a lot of you out there are sitting there talking about the NFL. And you're thinking about, okay, we're going to hear from Stephen A. about the Vikings and the Redskins. Well, let me tell you something right now. What the hell do you expect me to say? The Redskins are straight garbage. They're horrible. We all know this. They're not impressive. And I think the only thing to mention about them is, excuse me, Dwayne Haskins. Clearly, every time he comes in the game, he just shows further evidence that he's not ready. Is it really him or is it really the lack of coaching that they have? First in Jay Gruden and now in Bill Callahan. That's one. Number two, Adrian Peterson, one of the greatest running backs in the history of the National Football League. Damn shame seeing you in Washington. Hugging everybody with a huge smile on your face when you're one and seven. The fact of the matter is, is that why, why, if you're going to play, could you play for somebody else other than them? Anybody but them and Miami, because it's horrible right now, even though I'm wishing Miami luck. Two brothers, a GM and a head coach, inheriting that situation, that pathetic situation created by owner Stephen Ross and his Miami Dolphins. Don't like to see it, but it is what it is. As for the Minnesota Vikings, they're a legitimate threat. They're a legitimate threat, not because of Kirk Cousins, because I'm not sold. Even though his numbers are, pre- are, 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 are impressive, almost MVP caliber numbers when you consider the fact that he's completing 72% of his passes. He's thrown for 13 touchdowns, just three interceptions. And, oh, by the way, the Vikings are 6-2. and two. So it was very, very wise for Stephon Diggs to stop talking about all that want-to-be traded talk and how anything could happen. It's very good that he did that. All right? As for Thielen and the rest of the crew, look. The reality is is that it's going to come down to Kirk Cousins at some point, but if you're Zimmer and the Vikings, here's the reality. You got a great running back in Dalvin Cook. This brother's the truth. And you have a playoff-ready defense. The combination of the two puts you in a very pristine position, and I actually like it. I like it a whole lot. And I think that's something that needs to be mentioned. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. Again, you are listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, ESPN News. Let me transition to a little basketball, something that took place last night in Houston, Texas, where the Rockets hosted the Milwaukee Bucks, but ultimately lost 117-111, courtesy of the Greek Freak. A triple-double in just 28 minutes. 30 points, 13 rebounds, 11 assists. He was an absolute monster. Also hit two of his five three-pointers. That's 40% from three-point range. Ladies and gentlemen, his brother's the truth. The Greek freak, Giannis Antetokounmpo, is no joke. I personally believe that his jump shot is not reliable based on what I saw last year, but the one thing we have to give him credit for is every year he's gotten not just progressively, not just incrementally, but literally excessively better. This brother clearly works on his game in the offseason. Since he was a rookie, he has gained 57 pounds of muscle since he was a rookie. Not to mention the fact that his ball handling skills, his ability to get to the basket, obviously to finish on the open court, all of those things are no joke. I don't know if you saw this last night. The brother was pulling up for jump shots. I can't wait for my boy Champ to call in. The brother was pulling up for jump shots last night. I didn't, I didn't, I, that didn't escape me. Giannis Antetokounmpo, the reigning league MVP, is clearly on a mission. And I got to tell you something, too. I was of the mindset that they didn't have Brogdon any longer, that that would be a loss. Wesley Matthews is a nice pickup for them. We saw him the last year mired in Dallas while they weren't a good team. But playing for Milwaukee with the Greek freak and Middleton and obviously having the ability to get some open shots because of the teammates that you're playing with, Milwaukee is a force. I think the Eastern Conference is going to come down to them against the Philadelphia 76ers. And if I'm Philly, I would prioritize getting home court advantage. I'm here to tell you. You don't want a seven-game series with Milwaukee having home court advantage, regardless of what you saw Toronto do. I don't see them 
wasting away home court advantage in back-to-back years. I don't see that happening to the Greek freak. So if you're the Philadelphia 76ers and you want to live up to my proclamation that the 76ers are going to the NBA Finals, it would behoove you to treat the regular season with the seriousness that it deserves so you get the best record possible and home court advantage is yours. And that way, a seven-game series, the road to the finals has to come through the city of brotherly love. It will behoove you with the Greek freak to deal with. It will behoove you to get that. Let me get to Houston now. And here's the reason why I want to bring up Houston. They lost this game. Russell Westbrook's first regular season game in a Houston Rockets uniform. Him and James Harden seen arguing with each other on the court near the the scorer's table. Ladies and gentlemen, Russell Westbrook was absolutely right in what he said. Don't make something out of nothing. This This ain't James Harden with Dwight Howard. Or to a lesser degree, James Harden with a Chris Paul CP3. This is James Harden with his boy. They're boys, y'all. They're very tight. They got a lot of love for each other. They're former teammates with one another, James Harden and Russell Westbrook. If Russell Westbrook sits there and tells you to your face, don't keep asking these questions, trying to make something out of nothing, before he ultimately cusses you out. Don't get upset because he's telling you the truth and he has a right to expect you to believe it. Him and James Harden are boys. Them having a discussion. Listen, P.J. Tucker, a hardcore cat. You see him on the court defending. People who know basketball knows P.J. Tucker is one of the smartest and one of the really, really good brothers in the league. He's smart as hell. I got a prediction for you. P.J. Tucker going to be in this business when he retires. I don't know if y'all seen him interview. I don't know if you've seen him talk about basketball. He's actually pretty damn good as a commentator. I'm telling you that right now. For those of you out there looking to see basketball players wanting to talk about the game of basketball, I got news for you. Check out P.J. Tucker. Brother smart, too. But he ain't no punk. I saw them arguing, too. Nobody said anything about that. So there's no need to trip over Russell Westbrook and James Harden. They're boys. That's what boys do. Juvie's my boy. Champ's my boy. I've had to tell Champ to shut the hell up many times. Okay? Because he lost his damn mind. Thinking he invented the damn game of basketball. I had to tell him to shut the hell up. A few times I had to block him because he was getting on my damn nerves. Still my boy. Still my boy. But every now and then you got to check cats. Juvie, 300 pounds. I had to check him. Verbally, of course. Certainly not physically. But I had to check him, too. By the way, como esta? The point that I'm trying to make. His name is Juan Santiago. He's he's from Dominican. I mean, that's that's what it is. That's what That's what it is. I can do that. That's my man. He works for me. So what? I'm the boss. If I want people to know that you uh, you work for me, that that's what the hell I want. I want to know. Okay? You ain't going to do anything about it. That's the way it is. Anyway, I digress. My point is, watching the Houston Rockets play last night, I got to tell you something. They lost, but I'm more excited about them than I was before the season began. I really am. Because what I saw, when I saw Russell Westbrook pushing the ball up the floor in ways that Chris Paul nor anybody else ever could, not with that level of speed and that level of athleticism and that ability to finish at the basket. For him to be in a Houston Rockets uniform and to push the ball up the floor the way that he did and the zip balls to James Harden or Eric Gordon and for them to be wide open, missing the shots that they missed, ladies and gentlemen, with all due respect, how many nights do you think James Harden is going to shoot two of 13 from the field? Or one of eight from three-point range. How many nights do you think that's going to happen? And Eric Gordon, who's your sniper, shooting four of 19 from the field. Three of 12 from three-point range. Like 0 for 7 or 0 for 8 in the second half. How many times do you think that's going to happen with Eric Gordon? It was the season opener. And regardless of how Cleveland A. Smith, a.k.a. Jamie Foxx, said, take the D out of Dan Tony. After all these years, he still hasn't figured out that you have to play defense at some time. 
That was that was Cleveland A. Smith, a.k.a. Jamie Foxx. So we can chide D'Antoni about things defensively, but offensively, the man's brilliant. He knows what he's doing, and he creates opportunities through spacing, through ball movement, and getting the ball in the right person's hand at the right time. D'Antoni's pretty damn good at that. And demanding that anybody that steps on the court for him launches that damn basketball. Don't get out there and be passive. You're going to shoot the damn ball. You're playing for Mike D'Antoni, unless you Clint Capella. I like what I see from Houston. I really, really do. Houston can score on anybody. I Listen, James Harden and Eric Gordon were missing open shots. Open shots. That's not going to continue, y'all. So let's get that out the way. Now, what you need to be alarmed about is what you saw from the Golden State Warriors. They got blown out by the Los Angeles Clippers. 141 to 122, if I remember correctly, the most points given up in the Steve Kerr era over the last five years as head coach for the Golden State Warriors. Ladies and gentlemen, nobody's going to feel sorry for the Warriors. They're the reigning, they're the reigning five-time Western Conference champions. They've gone to five straight NBA finals. They've won three titles. I believe it would have been four if Kevin Durant and Klay Thompson hadn't been hurt. Hell, even with Kevin Durant hurt, I still believe Golden State would have beat Toronto with Kawhi Leonard if Klay Thompson hadn't gone down. And I'm not talking about just game six when he had 30 in two and a half quarters before going down for good with the ACL injury. No, I'm talking about game two when he got hurt, forcing him to miss game three. That's what I'm talking about. Remember, those are two games. And Klay Thompson wasn't, he was hobbling the rest of the series. If he was 100% healthy, Toronto wouldn't have beat Golden State. I don't care what anybody says. You can sit up there and go, oh, Stephen A's predictions are, y'all can kiss off, kick rocks. They had have won that series. They had have won that series. I'm telling you that right now. But having said all of that, Here's the reality that we can't escape. See, we thought that without Clay and without Kevin Durant, Steph Curry would be unleashed. He would be free. Ladies and gentlemen, he's a human being. If you're a team like the Clippers that have scorers all over the place, Kawhi, Lou Williams, just to name a few, right? And on top of it all, you're rough and rugged. You're tenacious defensively. You're loaded with heart. You ain't scared of anybody. Every single person on their squad competes. And you got 10 bodies to throw at dudes. What exactly do you expect Steph Curry to do with that? I'm surprised the score was that close. They were down by 24 after three quarters. They lost by 19, but we know it was much worse than that. But what is Steph Curry supposed to do? There's nothing you can do against that law, that arsenal. There's nothing you can do. Absolutely, positively nothing. And you just have to understand that. You have to respect it. And I keep telling people this all the time, and they don't listen to this, but I defer back to the days of Larry Brown when he was coaching AI. I know the game was a little bit different then. But when you had guys like Eric Snow, Aaron McKee, George Lynch, Tyrone Hill, Theo Ratliff, and then after that, Dikembe Mutombo. The list goes on and on. Do you know what Larry Brown did? Here's the ball, Allen Iverson. Do what you need to do offensively. But these four brothers here have you defensively. They got you covered. We going to make sure we we we, we going to stop people. And that's what George Lynch and Eric Snow and all of those boys were committed to doing. Nobody was getting over. If the Sixers did nothing else, they would keep games tight because they put you under lock and key. But if you don't have the ability to do that because you're Golden State and you're a bit hampered and Draymond a Lo- a Green with Kevon Looney ain't going to do it. Listen, Willie Cauley-Stein, he's going to be important to that team. Not only because he can run up and down the court like a Giselle and, and finish at the basket, but he's going to also be able to block shots and rebounds to some degree. And that's going to take some of the pressure off of Draymond Green, who's an undersized guy on your front line. He just really, really knows how to play. 
You can't expect Steph Curry to go out there having to move without the basketball, run through picks and screens and all of this stuff, and launch and expect him to survive over the course of 82 games. You can't expect that, ladies and gentlemen. You can't expect that. I'm not surprised at all by what happened to go to state. He doesn't have Klay Thompson. They might have lost last night anyway. But if Klay Thompson was, was healthy, do you really think Golden State's going out like that? And speaking of Klay Thompson, I'm going to reiterate my point once again. I do not believe for one second he's going to be gone for the rest of the season. I don't believe it. I'm telling you right now, I don't believe it. I believe that Klay Thompson will return before this season is over. And if he's anything close to what he was, I think somebody's going to get knocked off in the postseason. I ain't saying Golden State's going to win the championship, but I think somebody's going to get knocked off. These are champions, man. Loaded with heart. Ain't scared of nobody. And the two greatest snipers in the history of basketball. I don't know what you're going to do with that. I'm not saying they're going to beat everybody, but they damn sure going to beat somebody. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, ESPN News. I wanted to get to something else uh, that's obviously percolating in the news right now because we're staying with the city of Houston. We're going to touch on the Houston Astros. They fired assistant general manager Brandon Taubman but men for taunting a female a female reporters apparently after the Astros had beaten the Yankees with Altuve's walk off Homer um the assistant general manager Brandon Taubman taunted female reporters over the signing of Roberto Osuna you remember him Osunya Osunwa Osuna got to make sure wow Roberto Osuna um, for those of you who may not remember, he was previously accused of domestic violence. I don't recall whether there was a video out on him or not, but the details of that domestic violence incident were, were riveting, to say the least. So much so that he was suspended for more than 70 games, um, damn near half the season, and you had a whole bunch of folks out there that had a problem with the Astros even bringing him on the roster. Even some members of the Houston Astros did not want him on the team because they didn't want to be associated with a guy known for such heinous behavior. Nevertheless, the Astros signed him on board, brought him on board. He pitched relatively well during the ALCS. And after the Astros had clinched the pennant, Taubman was in the line in the, in the in the locker room during the celebration, yelling at female reporters. Thank God we got Asuna. I'm so effing glad we got Asuna. And um, it was in the direction of three female reporters Saturday night after their win over the Yankees, according to the Sports Illustrated articles. One of the reporters subjected to the taunts was wearing a purple domestic violence awareness bracelet when Taubman yelled it at her. That reporter, according to a subsequent account by National Public Radio, has tweeted repeatedly about domestic violence in recent years, and Taubman complained last year that her tweets of domestic violence hotline phone numbers had been posted moments after Asuna entered several Astros games in relief. So he clearly had an ax to grind with her. Remember, he was suspended for 75 games by the league. Although his criminal case was dropped after the alleged victim went to Mexico and refused to testify against him. The Astros had originally called the Sports Illustrated article misleading and completely irresponsible, claiming that Tallman had spoken only after, quote, being asked questions about a difficult outing. Quote, our executive was supporting the player during a difficult time, the Astros said at the time. His comments had everything to do with the game situation that just occurred and nothing else. They were also not directed toward any specific reporters. Well, lo and behold, they changed their course and they fired him because they found out they were wrong. 
Jessica Mendoza that does Sunday night baseball for ESPN. And let me say this about Jessica Mendoza, a class lady, class personified. Um, I got to just say this as an aside, nothing to do with this incident. She is sensational covering baseball for us. Just phenomenal. She's absolutely sensational. It, it really, really is. I think Alex Rodriguez does a hell of a job for us as well. But Jessica Mendoza is special. And she'll be on the show with us at the top of the 2 o'clock hour to of course, talk further about this. But I just wanted to say that. And the reason why I brought her name up wasn't just because she's our guest at the top of hour number two. It's also because of what she pointed out on Get Up with Mike Greenberg this morning on ESPN. When she said the vehement with which the Astros came to the defense of their assistant GM without any facts whatsoever, just completely dismissing the reporter, just completely dismissing the report, the manner in which they went about handling it. Ladies and gentlemen, somebody's got to say it, so I'm going to. Jessica Mendoza said it was troubling. I'm going to take it a step further. It's reminiscent of what people were accusing the NFL about. Years ago, what were folks saying? They were saying, hey, the level of seriousness that needs to be embraced when these accusations of insensitivity are aimed in a league's direction, whether it's for actions or it's for things verbalized, is troubling. Because at the very least, address the issue with the level of sensitivity that it deserves as opposed to being dismissive about it. Acting like it never happened, acting like it's the fault of the reporters that highlighted it, etc. Now, one could argue, does this guy deserve to be fired? They could sit up there and say no. And if it was just him celebrating in a locker room, being draped with champagne, caught in the moment, as insensitive as that may have been, it to me it might have called for a reprimand as opposed to a firing until... You bring into play the history involving the female reporter who was wearing the domestic violence, the, 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 the domestic abuse bracelet. Because if you complained about her in the past, and in the past you were talking about her as it pertained to her constantly tweeting out stuff whenever he was come into the game, well, then obviously. There's some sort of friction and tension there from an historical perspective, which means you did what you did intentionally. And that's where the firing is warranted. Because you allowed your personal feelings to interfere with your professional judgment. You did it on purpose and you did it in a very calculating fashion. That wasn't a mistake. It was purposeful. And now the Astros had to deal with you purposefully. It's just that simple. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. We'll go to your phone calls and more in a minute. Remember, Jessica Mendoza is out is on to start off hour number two. Plus, we'll get into the slew of NFL action that's scheduled to take place. Plus, LeBron James actually is going to show up. I mean, uh, word is he's going to show up tonight. I mean, he he's in the lineup. But word is he's going to show up tonight. He's not going to just check into the game, get a dunk, draw an offensive foul, and say, okay, Kawhi, I'll leave the rest of the night to you. Mike Conley and Donovan Mitchell are coming to town. LeBron will show up for that. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. More of the Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio, ESPN News in a minute. By the way, go to the Home Depot to add personality and style to your room with a wide selection of on-trend tile all in one place. Choose the Home Depot as your free no-hassle carpet installation partner where really fr- where free really means free on purchases over $499 through November 6th. Everything from moving furniture to carpeting stairs. 